enjoy trying the technology and giving us feedback because we can't make it better if we don't hear back from you. So we know that we don't have a shy audience in the SAP Tech Ed community. So go there, even try out the new groups feature. I think we have a, a way to start a conversation around things. Yeah. You can start an integration group. Integration group. You can go into the SAP Tech Ed group, learning <coughs> group, check out what's there. Um, also, I'm getting a little sad, I'm sorry, but what? I think we're almost out of time for this hour that we're together. Is it really coming to an end soon? No. No? Yes, yes it is, but um, <laughs> the sessions, workshops, we have workshops with unlimited seats. Have a look at those. Um, session recommendations coming from our... Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to Channel One, the home base of TechEd 2021. Uh, we're back, we're at eight o'clock in Central Europe and with me is my dear colleague Juliane Krampe. Hi Juliane, are you awake yet? Yes, sort of, I would say. Um, my name is Julien. I'm a project manager in the board area SAP Product Engineering, so the one that is headed by Thomas Sauer Essig. And I'm actually a Tech Ed Channel One newbie, so I only watched it last year. Uh, but I've been to multiple Tech Eds before, um, but I'm really looking forward to uh, this year's experience. And luckily, I already had some coffee, Karsten, so you don't have to moderate the show on your own. Um, I think. We can do it in a duo. And um, yeah, but what about you? Are you a morning person and who are you? Can you introduce yourself to the audience? My name is Carsten Hohage and I work out of TNI, that's technology and innovation. So that's uh, Jürgen's board area. And uh, I'm not a tech head newbie either, but I didn't bring my credibility badges. Uh, I brought my credibility shirt. That's why it's a little torn at the collar and everything. That's probably the first uh, community shard that SAP gave out. Uh, it's of SDN, as you can see, 250 points. Uh, so SDN was before SCN, which was before the community. Um, so I guess it's probably the oldest. Anyway, uh, it's, this is not about my community history. This is about TechEd 2021. What's the topic of the hour? Yes. So the topic of the, of the hour is called Enterprise AI, what it is, how we create it, and how it adds value. So we will have a strategy talk with Fei Yu Zhu and also Bhagat Nainani, and then we'll continue with an expert interview with Jana Richter. And this will be followed by a customer uh, interview or customer video with Willeroy and Boch, so how they are actually using AI. And in addition to those content hour specific topics, we'll also have another remote check-in with Lena. And uh, last but not least, or let's say we'll start actually with that, we'll have an influencer um, around the topic of meditation and mindfulness. Wow, okay, but let's start with the expert talk that you mentioned. Uh, we have here Fei Yu Shu, who will talk about how SAP makes your business intelligent. Uh, she's global head of AI at SAP, and she will be joined by Bhagat Nainani, who's an SVP in SAP product development for the BTP, the business technology platform. Let's hear what they have to say. But before that, uh, let me mention, do enter your questions in the questions and answers already. So we have them for the question and answer session later in the session. And good that we are now doing the video, Karsten, because I think I'm not yet awake. Oh, wow. Because I mixed up the hours, okay. I have to say. So there's no remote check-in and there's no mindfulness session today. Okay. So 
It's just AI. Sorry for you that. You are absolutely <laughs> right. And I don't seem to be awake either because I didn't catch that. Let's just roll the video. Hi, everyone. My name is Fei Xu. I'm the Global Head of Artificial Intelligence at SAP. With me today, Bhagat Nainami, Head of Product Development at the BTP Core at SAP. Today, we are going to show you how can we make your business intelligent with enterprise AI technology. Let's get started. Before we dive into how we can help your enterprise work smarter with enterprise AI, I would like to explain how AI learns. I start with how we humans learn. Imagine a child at a zoo. He sees a tiger for the first time and points to the animal because he wants to know what it is. The mother says tiger. What the child perceives, namely the appearance of the tiger images, his, its movement, smell, sound, seems belong to implicit knowledge for the child. He's learning based on his or her experience at the zoo. And then in the evening at home, the child learns in a picture book that tigers eat meat, live in Asia, are part of the cat family. He also learns about animals, the hierarchy, and their behavior. This knowledge is expert knowledge we learn from school. Now he can apply his combined knowledge to better recognize tigers, even can explain to other kids with pride. And uh, how does this apply to business, to the intelligent enterprise? Just as the child learns through experience what animal looks like, how it moves and how it sounds, AI learns how to automatically conduct recognition, classification, prediction, even optimization based on the historic data about business transaction, decision makings stored in our enterprise systems. The machine learning models learn from the data. The data are the experience. They are implicit knowledge for our intelligent applications. The explicit knowledge of our AI applications consists of business logic, business rules, common sense, and constraints. Together, the implicit knowledge learned from the data and the explicit knowledge help us to build optimized intelligent applications tailored for the business context. What makes enterprise AI different from the software in the past? Before AI, our software relied mainly on the um, rules, explicit knowledge. In enterprise world, we have big amount of historic data of business transactions and business decisions. And the enterprise data are heterogeneous and diverse. If you look at this example, you can see there are structured data, such as database tables, even in the Excel format. There are large amount of unstructured data, such as emails, business reports. And given the linked enterprise data, we can train the machine learning models and also leverage explicit enterprise knowledge, for example, business objects and relations among them. And uh, from the enterprise data, we can even update and uh, enrich existing enterprise knowledge. And given the implicit and explicit knowledge, via its integration, we can build extremely intelligent enterprise applications. And once again, just to ensure you have the full picture, the explicit knowledge in our software solution comes from decades of SAP working with you, with small, medium, large business, and in different business areas, banking, manufacturing, insurance. Therefore, I want to continue. Based on our deep experience, our offerings, and another great thing is that if you work with us, you become part of a huge network. Best-run businesses are intelligent enterprises which apply technologies within RG efficient and integrated business processes. And the intelligent enterprises do not operate in silo. The SAP business network enables customers to transform supply chains and SAP solutions for sustainability, help them understand and manage their impact on people and on the environment. We SAP, we help companies become intelligent enterprise by enabling customers to discover and deploy vertical solutions in order to apply industry best 
practices and extend current business processes and by helping them to manage every part of the organization, employees, customers, products, span, finance, and IT. And what are the USPs of our enterprise AI? We make it easy for our customers with unified integrated enterprise grade AI lifecycle management and operations. And uh, instead of providing general purpose AI technologies, we provide our solutions tailored to address our customer business needs. And as I mentioned, we offer AI embedded in our stand software. This means our deliveries comply with all shipment processes and standards. Our goal is to provide solutions that is planable, responsible, and transparent. And lastly, AI for everyone through our SAP business technology platform. Now, I want to invite Bagat, our SVP product development, BTP call at SAP, to show you a workflow intelligence demo. Bagat, the floor is yours. Thank you, Faye, uh, for the nice introduction of AI services for the intelligent enterprise. Um, as you mentioned at uh, SAP, we are not just providing AI tools, but we are embedding intelligence in all of our business applications, whether it be supply chain, um, ERP, HR applications. What we heard from customers as they were extending these applications or building automations is that they wanted the same set of intelligence features for their own solutions. And there were certain common themes that we saw across all of these requirements. Customers wanted their business processes to be much more streamlined and they wanted AI assisted decisions. For example, they wanted AI to help them predict cycle times of certain business processes or make recommendations to approve or reject certain business transactions or identify anomalies in, in certain types of business uh, documents. Also, they wanted line of business experts to play active role in influencing AI. Uh, so essentially what that meant is provide no code configuration of these uh, uh, AI pipelines without having any data science knowledge. Finally, customers also want trustworthy AI, which is so that there's, they can explain the decisions and there's no unfair bias, as well as there is a proper governance applied to the sensitive customer data that is used for creating these models. So we kept all of these themes in mind as we were bringing these AI capabilities to our process automation um, services. Before I go into that, maybe let me touch a bit upon what are the capabilities we have in SAP process automation. With SAP process automation, we have a strong set of workflow capabilities that allows you to create multi-step processes with human approvals, with uh, automated service tasks, for repetitive actions, we allow you to create uh, robotic process automation RPA bots, uh, which are unattended or, atten or attended. We also have business rules that allow you to declaratively define business logic and then you know, use that to create dynamic processes. We took all of these capabilities and we have integrated them into a unified offering and then elevated the experience so that now citizen developers can create these processes without any coding. We've also integrated process automation with our uh, process insights and process mining capabilities from Signavio, as well as customer sentiment analysis from Qualtrics to allow you to use these insights to drive your process improvement initiatives. And finally, we have a set of reusable artifacts that allows you to get started very quickly so that we have standard processes across various industries which you can use and then configure based on your company's business process to get started really quickly. Now, how did we bring AI into process automation? Uh, so some of the key features we have introduced recently. Firstly, we now enable line of business experts to configure AI services without having any data science knowledge. What that means is they can just configure the system by providing the decision criteria, providing various attributes of importance, provide relative importance of the various attributes, and based on that, they get intelligent recommendations. They are also able to configure the system to have explainable decisions and provide confidence levels for different types of recommendations. For example, um, if you are doing approving purchase orders without invoices, which is a standard scenario you see in many times that involves human involvement, now the AI-assisted workflows can look at the previous history, look at the supplier, look at the amounts, and make recommendations on whether to approve or reject a certain 
uh, a business transaction or if there are certain anomalies and re that require further action. Similarly, another area where we have introduced AI services is for information extraction from documents. When you use our RPA bots, frequently there is unstructured data that comes in through emails, through PDF documents, through Excel, and then those are used to, for example, create sales orders. So with AI-assisted decision uh, document information extraction services, you can now extract fields of interest, correlate them, and also use that to classify the documents. So now by using these AI services, these documents can be processed much more efficiently and much more accurately. And so with that, let us show you a demo of how we use both of these capabilities in a sales order uh, approval scenario. As a business expert, I look at my workspace to see how we could optimize the handling of incoming sales orders. Besides my tasks, I see workflow variants extending sales order management in SAP s hana information about open instances, customer sentiments, and that we use an RPA bot to automate the creation of sales orders. Here's the process variant to handle high net amount sales orders, validated by a business rule. I have configured start conditions based on sales order value, currency, and further context data. We have here a parallel approval and review, before further approvals can happen. With workflow intelligence, we will provide intelligent decision support. But first check the RPA bot, leveraging document information extraction. The bot automatically extracts data from spreadsheets sent via email and triggers the creation of sales orders. Let us now configure a new workflow intelligence scenario. With the name of the scenario, the workflow ID and the task ID. A decision criteria is the information which was used by a user to take the decision historically. Technically, these are attributes of the workflow context. I define which of these criteria is used as a decision taken by the user, for example approved or rejected. We want to keep the scenario up to date by retraining it. Review, save and start the training. This I have already done before. The new workflow intelligence scenario, sales order first approval, is now ready. We see here also the retraining frequency, every 1000 records. As we use workflow intelligence now, I can remove the parallel step to review high net amount orders and streamline the process a bit further. In my inbox, I see the order 3224 has a confidence level of above 80%, which is quite good. This is based on contextual data such as amount and product type and some further historical data. So I approve the order. You have seen embedded intelligence and decision support in action, adding the value of AI in process automation with RPA and workflow intelligence. Thank you, Bhagat. Now let me conclude the session with some information on how we are infusing AI into our applications. First, you can get our AI embedded easily and natively through our standard uh, software. And uh, you see a lot of uh, applications are available for you already. So it's all the automation, our workflow intelligence. Secondly, SAP offers a growing rich set of AI services to customers and partners. And uh, you can build extensions on, on top of our capabilities, AI business services and the conversational AI and uh, our process automation. And furthermore, if you really want to build, build your own applications, our offering on the third level, you can enjoy too. And then in addition, you can also get great learning offerings uh, to complement uh, this great conference. Okay, find all the great content at the learning.sap.com, take it. And in closing, we would like to invite you to join us in making enterprise become more resilient, networked, collaborative, profitable, sustainable intelligence. Thank you for your listening. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Faye and Bagat, for those insights. So, Karsten, would you have known what Tigers have to do with SAP software? Actually, Tigers, I had no idea, but we will at some point have to talk about animals in the studio. Um, anyway, uh, there is also, I do seem to remember there is a transaction called something with uh, cats, so that would be tigers, uh, but that's a different story, I guess. Let's better turn to our next guest. 
Okay, but just to recap, so the CAT's transaction has nothing to do with Casimir the CAT, right? I don't think so. Okay. I haven't asked him. Maybe you should. He's behind you. Oh, wow. <laughs> See, we have to talk about animals in the studio. <laughs> okay, but moving over to our next agenda item. Um, so up next, we have an expert interview. And uh, we will be joined by Jana Richter, who is Head of Product Success, Artificial Intelligence at SAP. And we are really happy uh, to have her here. Hi, Jana. Hi, Jana. Hi, Carsten. Hi, Jana. Good morning. Now, um, as you're here, and uh, as we've seen a portfolio of you in the strategy video from uh, Faye and uh, Bagat, uh, can you share some more details where uh, AI is already built into SAP solutions or where it's just happening? Yeah, sure. And uh, maybe the first answer is I can't even explain all the scenarios because SAP is really doing this at scale and infusing artificial intelligence virtually into any solution and into all processes. What I can do is I can share two of the recent examples where artificial intelligence is used in S4HANA, which I find quite representative and inspiring as well on how this can help. Um, so one of the latest examples is intercompany reconciliation. So for intercompany reconciliation, artificial intelligence extends the intercompany matching and reconciliation functionality, which is a core financial component of SAP S4HANA. And here very frequently see that Intercompany documents are left unmatched by the rule-based approaches, thus meaning a lot of manual effort to figure out the remaining matches that need to be done. And here we recently can apply artificial intelligence, which takes care of those unmatched documents and increases the automation level. Thus, we increase the automation level for the whole intercompany-based um, document matching with a combination of rule-based approaches and artificial intelligence capabilities, which then overall reduce the cost of finance tasks, speed up month and closing, and of course, re um, reduce the risk of any kind of compliance violations. A second example, which I think is quite familiar to everyone, is sales order automation. So sales orders are virtually like in every um, core SAP ERP systems. And although the paperless office is reality already today, we still see a lot of sales orders received either as um, faxes or very frequently as emails with attachments. And here, the whole manual labor around handling those attachments, informations from emails is automated with the help of artificial intelligence because we can really extract customer's purchase order information from PDF documents, match that to the data in the system's master data, identify missing data, and offer a guided correction procedure before creating the final sales order. And as you can imagine, this relieves the sales office from a lot of repetitive, yeah, maybe sometimes even boring manual tasks, really improving the efficiency and customer satisfaction because the whole procedure is handled more automatic and quicker. Okay, thanks. Uh, but one in-between question maybe, do customers then trust completely on the artificial intelligence or uh, is it always things are routed and then the user looks on it to verify? <laughs> the classical SAP answer is, of course, it depends. I mean, the <laughs> final goal is, of course, that you would like to automate the procedures um, and give a lot more contextual information and recommendations to the end users. I think one of the specifics that I had to learn as well when joining artificial intelligence is that unlike in classical IT, it's not a zero or a one. It's not a true and false, right? Artificial intelligence takes decisions like humans based on historical data with a certain likelihood or confidence level, the machine learning algorithm proposes what to do. And this threshold, this confidence level, of course, needs to be looked at to say, well, be above which threshold do we automate the procedure? Where do we really then apply whatever the AI algorithm um, yeah, proposes? And where do we have recommendations for the users, but the users still review them if a certain threshold is not reached and we have a rather low confidence level? Okay. Still, it is then an anchor point where people can get started. Thanks. Just, just, just making sure if we're already ruled by machines or if we still are the bosses <laughs> over the AI. Uh, and uh, turning to uh, 
from where it's built in to the other side, uh, if developers want to use AI services of the BTP, uh, where do they go? How do they find out? Yeah, something that we have taken from the concrete examples that you've just seen. I mean, this is a journey, the intelligent enterprise that SAP already does since a couple of years. And we've seen that there are repetitive patterns and repetitive scenarios where we decided to carve out so-called AI business services. So those are really tailored AI capabilities for common business process challenges in SAP systems, and that can be applied in multiple places. And it's really yeah, provided as a service, so it's ready to go. US developers can consume this. Our SAP developers, SAP internally do so, and we provide those capabilities for customers and partners out there as well as part of BTP. Um, and you can then use services like the document information extraction service that is the underlying capability um, below the sales auto automation scenario that I just mentioned. So this is one of the ingredients that you get via business technology platform, but of course the whole story is bigger. So um, we have SAP AI Core as the underlying workload engine for machine learning workloads that we use for those business services and scenarios. Of course, persistence is an important um, aspect with SAP HANA and SAP data intelligence for data integration. Then the whole area of chatbots um, is very yeah, present in the space of AI as well. And SAP Conversation AI is here our environment yeah, to build and monitor intelligent chatbots. And um, workflows and IRPA are an important ingredient as well because very frequently you would like to automate a whole sequence of manual steps and artificial intelligence takes a decision or gives a recommendation, but the sequence can be automated by a um, RPA or with workflows that guide the users uh, through certain steps. And you will say to see later on a really nice example from Villeroy and Boch on how a combination of those technologies is applied to a real life scenario. Perfect. So if uh, people want to go or customers want to go into those AI projects, what are some challenges they should be aware of or which challenges might they face? Yeah, and maybe I, I can tell it from my own classical IT background. I mean, I'm not a data scientist either, right? So um, I used to work with other SAP NetReviewer cloud platform, business technology platform, um, technology before I joined a couple of years back artificial intelligence teams. For me, three key main characteristics were, um, first of all, the importance of data. Faye mentioned that beforehand. Unlike in classical IT projects where you can live with a dummy data set that is somewhat representative, for machine learning models, you really need the full historical set of records so that the machine learning model can be trained. Another aspect is the confidence level that I just mentioned, right? So it's not true or false, zero or one, but it's really decisions like humans take them and thus the confidence level that needs to be taken into account. And of course, pretty important is this is not a fixed setup, right? I mean, boundary conditions change, new data um, it, yeah, is created. And this means you have to incorporate the idea of retraining as well that the ground truth of your machine learning model stays up to date. So whenever you then see confidence values reducing over time, more manual work that needs to be taken care of, um, it's the latest point in time when a retraining um, is due. <laughs> okay, so uh, if you speak about historic data, what would you say is historic? How far back do you need to go to actually start? <laughs> I mean, again, of course, the answer is it depends, but you really need the full data set that is supposed to be representative. Like Faye explained, right? I mean, the machine learning model learns from historical data, from what happened in the past. You learn how decisions can be done, what the patterns are, and thus meaning you need quite a representative data set. What is representative, how big this is, um, how many years you need to go back depends, of course, a bit on the case, but um, the more data, the better. So you can really validate your machine learning model and tailor it for um, all the relevant tasks it needs to do. So does that, does that mean the machine learning model basically first has to listen to your system for a while or is there like training data uh, that you can initially train it with? And where do you get that from? I remember from back in the days that you just mentioned, like the NetWeaver where we met, uh, that training data for such things was the hardest to get by. Yeah, and this is still, I mean, Maybe let's get started with the approach that some of the services we can and capabilities we can already pre-train. 
So if we look at the document information extraction example that I mentioned beforehand, um, invoices, purchase orders, business cards, all those are capabilities where we can provide pre-trained models. And then if you have, as a customer want to get started, you can start with those pre-trained models and also have the option to create your own templates. This is one of the approaches. But for other cases like intercompany reconciliation that I just mentioned, I mean, every company setup is very individual and you really have very different companies and very different bookings between them. So from one customer, you cannot apply the same data set to another one. Thus, we then deliver the machine learning algorithms, but they get trained with the customer data. And typically, I mean, most of our customers don't start totally net new without historical data in the system. Thus, you can take the historical records that your um, SAP S4 HANA system already contains and take this as a basis for training. Okay, makes sense. Um, one more thing, as I just mentioned, back in the days, basically, uh, what I remember when we already had offered uh, two mechanisms, one was more black box and one was more uh, Boolean structured routing of documents. Uh, what we found uh, is that customers all retreated to the Boolean again because they didn't trust the black box of uh, intelligence uh, or whatever kind of similar mechanisms. What do you find these days? Do they combine or what do they do? What we see in many processes is that it's really a combination, right? You can go to, of course, to a certain point with rules and whatever you can represent with rules, right? Where you have very clear, definable decision trees, of course, it makes sense to still apply those. And the advantage is there, it's of course, very clear which decision is taken by which rule. And if you harden those, they are a really good basis. But really describing your whole business reality just with rules is usually something that is close to impossible. I haven't seen this with any customer, right? <laughs> um, and really saying, well, you then combine rule-based approaches with artificial intelligence. This really is then a powerful combination to say, well, take care of rules, have artificial intelligence with confidence values, um, of course, looked at and look at those proposals. And what I just mentioned, I mean, the whole idea of really taking confidence values as threshold is even your starting point. You typically don't have to automate everything right from the beginning, but look at the proposals first, start with a very high threshold, then see over time that those proposals do match and where the threshold is where you would like to apply this and match this. Oh. And of course, I mean, we don't have a self-driving SAP S4HANA system, but we really apply AI into individual spaces of the process. And the self-driving S4HANA system um, is more a, a vision for the future, right? <laughs> yep. Okay, I get it. Um, now, uh, as we come towards an end of our interview time here, uh, what would you say, Jana, uh, if you could have three things that people should remember from this interview or from this topic hour, what would they be? First of all, I hope that you've seen in the interview with Faye and Bagat, and um, you will see them later on in Villa and Boch as well, that AI can power SAP's enterprise solutions and processes and really increase the level of automation and be delightful for users because they get more contextual information, recommendations, and thus this opens up totally new possibilities. And we embed this from SAP side into SAP solutions, but you as a developer can also use the same ingredients for your own extensions. So I would recommend to get started within Discovery Center and in the SAP community to learn about this and explore this and try it out. And of course, be aware there's some specifics in AI projects, like the importance of data, but it's not rocket science. Get started and learn while you go. Okay, thanks. Uh, I didn't keep count there, uh, but that was uh, three points, I guess. Uh, great to hear from you, Jana. Thank you. Uh, great to always hear. Um, I think we're saying, are we saying goodbye for now? No, we're for not. For now. For now. We're saying goodbye for now, but we'll see you later. See you later. Indeed. See you later. Bye-bye. Always great to hear uh, updates from the experts there, but often it's even more interesting to hear how things are being used. Yes, so Jana already teased, right, what's coming up. Um, so, um, but I still want to, I still want to do my my bridge, you know, trying to try to include that in here. So um, just do it. Just do it. <laughs> um, so we're here in the tech ed house uh, in the virtual one, currently in developer lab. And uh, we are now moving into the kitchen so that uh, we can get 
some more coffee, right? Um, and uh, also to sort of introduce our next um, video. So as mentioned before, we will have Villeroy and Boch uh, with us and they will explain how they're actually using AI. Karsten, um, do you know Villeroy and Boch? I do know Villeroy and Boch, of course, but I couldn't tell you if we have anything in our home because my wife from, I don't know, masonry to everything is the responsible one when it comes to anything that is tangible around the house. Uh, so I have no idea, uh, but I'm interested to hear what they have to say. Perfect. So um, we will hear from Daniel Neuhäuser, who is head of ERP core solutions in the corporate IT of Villeroy and Boch, how they implemented business document processing powered by AI business services and also um, SAP Intelligent RPA. So really looking forward to that. And just as a reminder, um, we have both Faye, but also Jana and Daniel with us um, after this video um, for a live Q&A session. So please make sure to jump over to the official SAP TechEd platform and put your questions into the Q&A tool so that we can address it directly to our experts. And with that, um, let's kick off the video. Hello and welcome to the TechEd session of Willow and Boch Experiences, Intelligent RPA and SAP AI Business Services. My name is Daniel Neuhäuser and I'm in Corporate IT of Willow and Boch responsible for projects and applications around our business core processes and taking care on our activities with Intelligent RPA. Willow and Boch is an innovative, design-strong multinational company that can look back on a long history and has never stood still. How did we become what we are today? Since our foundation in 1748, we are a ceramic producer having developed into an international lifestyle brand. We are deeply rooted in European culture and producing innovative and stylish products to enhance people's lives, provide continuous inspiration and open up new horizons for truly personalized interior design. All beginnings are small. Thus, the origins of Villeroy Boch lie in Ordon la Tiche in Lorraine where François Boch and his three sons began producing ceramic tableware in 1748. Today, we employ around 7,100 people producing at certain locations and mark our products in 125 countries around the world. As a result, we achieved a turnover of 801 million euro in 2020. Right now, our headquarters is located in Metlach, Saarland, Germany, near the Luxembourgish and French border. In 2018, we started our journey with SAP Intelligent RPA. And today, I would like to present our use case where we first combine Intelligent RPI with SAP AI Business Services, starting with the functional view. Lots of invoices are received in a central email folder. In the standard, each invoice will be automatically processed, interpreted and transferred into the posting process. For some reasons, this process runs into an error, mostly if the email contains other documents and invoices. These emails are forwarded into a dedicated folder, already automated. This folder has to be checked and all errors needed to be processed manually, each day. There are some decisions to take. Checking document type, combining different document types, handle commercials. So for each mail, each attachment need to be opened and checked. For example, if we receive an invoice and a delivery note, these documents have to be combined. This process has some automation potential. It is repetitive and does contain only a limited number of steps. Most of these steps are rule-based and more or less static. We need to access an Outlook folder and extract attachments. After classification, the attachment needs to be handled according to a rule set. But the classification does not follow static rules. The structure of the documents is unknown. And there are too many documents, templates to categorize and implement all of them. So we needed a solution which could handle unstructured data and unknown data. For this feature set, we decided to use the document classification service. As part of the implementation, we had to define the required document types, for us, invoices, dunning letter, GTC and delivery notes. And for each type, we had to be trained with a set of training data. With that, we could combine rule-based and experiential decisions for an end-to-end -end automation process. So in detail, first step is a bot, which is looping through an email folder and checking each mail. Just to remember, 
The emails are pre-sorted and each mail is result of error handling as part of standard processing. So we know that there is a need for act in every mail. Second step, if a mail is an attachment, each attachment will be extracted, stored and sent to the document classification service, which is a SAP BTP deployment. Each response contains a classification, including a probability for each document type. For each type, we have defined a threshold. For example, an invoice needs, in our case, a classification probability of 65% detection rate. From that rate, we can assume that the document is an invoice. For other document types, the thresholds are different. Based on this rule set, the bot decides about the document type. So this is the interaction between classification service and bot, this rule set. In general, we need to deploy the service, define and train the document types to get an answer about the classification probability. To interpret this answer, we need to define a rule set based on which result, which classification should be selected. Means that we have two options to influence the results. Retraining to improve the classification quality and optimizing the thresholds to adjust to our process needs. After the bot has taken this rule-based decision, the different processes to handle the documents are executed. There are a few. For example, invoice and delivery note from the same email will be combined to one new document and sent again to the invoice handling. GTC will be ignored. Dunning letter will be forwarded to a special process. Let's have a look into the results with some figures. With this project, we could automate the classification of more than 90% of the document processes quite soon after the go-live. Basis of this KPI is the end-to-end -end process, so not only the correct classification. The 9% manual rework looked quite much, but it is as well related to process-relevant topics. There are some cases where the decision is too complex and therefore not beneficial to automate. For example, if there are two invoices and two delivery nodes in the same mail. In this case, the bot could not determine which invoice belongs to which delivery node. Other topics are related to the thresholds definitions, especially if a document could not be classified because the classification is below all thresholds. If this happens too often, retraining will be processed to improve. Alternatively, the thresholds could be adjusted. So here we can see the two options to influence, getting a high classification probability and implementing the optimal threshold. If the threshold for document type is too high, too much documents need to be processed manually. Otherwise, the risk of a wrong classification increases. At the moment, we are handling around about 3,000 mails with 4,500 documents each year. And as a conclusion, I would like to talk how we get there. When we started this project, we had experience with Intelligent RPA and limited experience with AI services. So we did a strict scope management and kept the focus on the business case. To minimize the risk, we avoided business critical steps and limited the dependencies to other processes. With that, we could focus on the core implementation and automation and limit the overhead for administrative tasks. It is a major advantage that we could automate with intelligent RPA within an existing process without impact on it. Secondly, we took care on a transparent expectation management. There's one major change. Compared to a standard decision rules, it is not explainable why and because of which parameter a document is classified. So it is non-deterministic and requires trust in the service. This leads to the last point, proof of concept. This bot was not our first bot. So we had already given internally the proof that a bot could handle all these steps. But we had to prove that the document classification service will work with high quality. This was our first mission. We deployed the service, collected training data, and trained the first versions. Our learning in this phase was the importance of training data quality. But even with the first trained versions, we could show the potential. In this phase, we had to define as well the optimal thresholds. This was specific on our documents and processes and needed some adjustments by goal life preparations. And of course, a learning effect, how to set these thresholds. But the influence on the automation quality is very high, as these thresholds directly impact the automation KPI. We started with a classical attendant bot, as a stabilization phase and a manual trigger to ensure that everything runs correctly. It was planned from the beginning to shift to unattendant mode to increase efficiency and automation rate. 
So one of the first optimization steps was a transfer into an unattended bot on a virtual server with very limited support needs. In a nutshell, the combination of intelligent RPA and AI services allowed us to automate even a quite complex process with unstructured data, which is now running autonomously in a background process. Thank you for your attention and I'm looking forward to the questions in the Q&A sessions. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, always great to see how our technologies are being used. Um, and as we just heard from you now, uh, you will join the questions and answer and discussion panel that is starting with this. Also joined by uh, Jana Richter, who we just saw talking with us a few minutes ago. Also joined by Fei Yu Shu, who we also saw in the expert strategy video just a few more minutes ago. And then also joined by Thomas Vollmering, who's new to the circle. Uh, so I'll introduce him quickly. He's head of product management and solution engineering for SAP workflow management and chief product manager for process automation. Uh, so welcome, Jana, Daniel, Fay, and Thomas. Hi. Hi. Hi, <laughs> Gaston. So, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start with you, maybe, Daniel, because I always like to uh, to see how uh, things are actually being deployed. Uh, what's what's the plan? How does it go on at uh, Willroy and Boch with uh, using AI services from SAP? Oh yes, we have we have several ideas. So um, uh, we see, of course, advantage of, of all these topics, and uh, we see the the chances we have with it, and. Uh, we try to plan regular steps, but not the, uh, not too big ones. So um, right now, of course, we want to increase our, our bot usability. Um, and we we are started with integration of uh, conversation AI and uh, robotics. So um, our current, uh, current project idea is that we want to trigger uh, uh, bots uh, via, via a chatbot. So to, um, to change a little bit the user interface and uh, to allow a user just trigger a bot, for example, via Teams chat. Um, of course, we are we are checking the uh, some some more services, uh, the document information extraction service from uh, from BTP. It's one of our uh, POCs we are running right now. Um, as well, it is now integrated in the in the RPA framework directly, so it makes everything even even easier. Um, and I, I guess we have, we have lots of ideas. We just have to take the time to uh, bring them to life. Perfect. Thank you so much. And the first question I actually want to take from the audience is, I think, uh, Thomas, I would direct it to you. And the question is, why not directly focusing on improving software internal workflows instead of optimizing it by RPA? That is a good question. <laughs> well, I think that, you know, you can uh, with workflows, um, you know, manage structured processes, you can manage approvals, you have, you know, uh, rules that basically uh, automate decisions based on, you know, uh, decision trees. But I think what, what Jana also mentioned before is that, you know, if you add actually <clears throat> artificial intelligence to it and, and uh, you know, data attribute recommendations or, or uh, document information extraction, you basically get uh, as well actually historical data and, and recommendations that you do not have in traditional kind of workflows. Now bringing this all together is a very powerful kind of approach for any kind of workflow customer. Okay, thanks Thomas. Uh, maybe let's go on with uh, Faye because that's the, you were the longest ago who we heard uh, speaking. Um, can you share, share some more detail uh, how exactly SAP leverages uh, customer data in combination with AI to build the intelligent enterprise? Yes, um, it's a very important question, right? And the uh, data is so important. Uh, we are very happy now we have uh, uh, potential to access uh, customer data. Our customers are willing to share with us in order to improve uh, the solutions and also contribute to their intelligent transformation. Uh, our strength, our SAP strength is to understand complex business challenges and optimize uh, business processes, right? And also, um, our customer data reflect the deep uh, process uh, know-how and the wide uh, industry coverage. And our SAP system really contain the business relevant data 
and the process information of customers. In comparison to our competitors, we have a huge customer install base with massive amounts of enterprise data. In addition, we run the most business transactions across all lines of business in the world. The high value real world data, this is very important, is the basis for our enterprise relevant machine learning models that contribute to the intelligence solutions for automation, monitoring, planning and forecasting. Furthermore, as you see the uh, workflow intelligence, also Thomas mentioned, right, and uh, Daniel also shared with his uh, experience, our intelligence solution not only leverage data-driven approach, we are able also to extract knowledge and explain our, our users. The explainability and transparency of our solution is very, very important. With our real-world enterprise data and the enterprise knowledge, the combination is very, very powerful. Thank you. And um, maybe the next question I would like to um, direct to Jana. Um, so I think we heard throughout TechEd a lot that partners are playing really a crucial role um, for a lot of things and for working with SAP software. How um, can they actually um, collaborate with us in the AI area? Yeah, that's a, that's a great point, right? Um, the whole intelligent enterprise doesn't end where SAP infuses artificial intelligence into business processes or where customers do it for their own extensions. But of course, partners are a super important ingredient and, and contributor to this whole setup. So um, at least what I envision is that really this whole intelligent enterprise idea, of course, is then driven by the partner ecosystem as well with industry specific um, extensions that leverage AI, um, really with applying this to the very specific use cases and the very specific challenges that the customers have out there and where they work closely with partners in analyzing the processes in optimizing that on an ongoing basis and then really applying the AI capabilities that we provide via business technology platform to the SAP systems and processes. So, um, I mean, with all or most of the ingredients being available on business technology platform with AI business services, RPA, workflow intelligence, what Thomas just mentioned, um, and conversation AI, and even more, of course, the partner ecosystem is encouraged to explore those capabilities, build use cases, explore with their customers where those can be applied and where really, um, yeah, processes can become more intelligent. Okay, and uh, thanks, Jana. Uh, and as you just mentioned, uh, the workflow uh, and uh, Thomas's part in that again. Uh, let me let's turn back to customers. Maybe um, let's say I'm a workflow management customer. So far, I've been doing things unintelligently. Haha. -ha. Uh, <laughs> uh, how do I now start accessing, building in uh, intelligent uh, functions in my workflow? solution yeah how can i make you more intelligent uh, that's true <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um you know we have shipped uh, workflow intelligence uh, uh, recently uh, with an update of sap workflow management so if you're an sap workflow management customer you just you know go to your uh, your tenant a new tile has been actually added uh, to the workflow management application in the launchpad and uh, the configuration experience is called configure workflow intelligence scenario this is where you can uh, get started directly today right uh, in addition we have also added you know um, uh, we have launched actually sap process automation now which is the combination of or the evolution of workflow management and robotic process automation uh, so combining actually RPA and workflow together in a product with a citizen developer user experience. And there we are actually combining workflow intelligence with the power of robotic process automation. So think about that, that you can, you know, in, in addition to getting recommendations on your tasks that you have, for instance, for approvals and so on, that you get also the power of document information extraction with, uh, with bots. So automations and workflows in one product with embedded AI to actually uh, improve the, you know, the, uh, the intelligence of your process automation scenarios uh, overall. Yeah. Okay, um, so um, Daniel, you already automated um, some of your processes. 
Are there any best practices that you can share with the community or also maybe some things people should be aware of um, that you were facing so um, that it's easier for them to get started? <clears throat> yeah, I guess lots of the things Jana said already, for example, the, the data quality, if you if you have own trained uh, uh, AI service like we have this, this document classification. So uh, it, it will be it will be very fast if you have a, a good data set um, which which trains uh, the service correctly. So one of our first steps, we uh, we were a little bit uh, lazy with, with sorting the documents and we trusted in our our pre-sorted uh, document types and we, we we got to know that not everything we have classified as an invoice is really an invoice. So um, that, that yeah, was one of the things you have to check the documents and you have to check the training data set because it has to be correct. If not, uh, the quality might not work uh, for the first step because if you if you explain an invoice and algorithm which is isn't which isn't an invoice in in real life, then it will not be able to take uh, every invoice. So that's that's well, that's an important uh, important experience next to the uh, the scope of the project. So uh, we started small, um, and that gave us a chance to uh, to come fast to a go live, um, which break which brought uh, directly benefit, and then we could improve step by step. And with these two steps uh, and uh, and the transparent expectation management, uh, we were successful till today. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Daniel. Uh, that reminds me of one more thing, Thomas. Here, um, do you actually have to be explicitly a workflow management customer uh, to use all this, or is it also embedded into S4 HANA flexible workflows and things like that? Yeah, like I told you uh, before, I mean we have shifted with SAP workflow management, and we would actually love to see customers explore, you know, the advanced workflow and process automation capabilities in the business technology platform. So currently, it's not planned that we support the embedded workflow engine in S4 HANA and, and ERP. Um, uh, you know, um, we will make it available with SAP process automation, uh, and we take it actually from there. Okay. Perfect. So I think um, we are already at the top of the hour, or at least the top of the uh, expert Q&A part. So thank you so much, uh, Feiyu, Jana, Daniel, and Thomas, for joining us and for answering all the questions. And yeah, have a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. 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 So, Carson, that was a lot. Any key learnings, key takeaways from the last... 45, 50 minutes. I like two things in particular. The one is uh, what Thomas just said, that basically when you are enabled to use AI or intelligent services in your workflows, uh, that it's just there, that there uh, an additional tile appears and you don't really have to worry much about uh, do I have it or not. At least that sounded convenient. I haven't seen it, to be honest, uh, but it sounded good. Um, and of course, I always like uh, to get the experiences from customers, and it seems that Will Roy and Boch of course are uh, making some great progress here. Uh, so I love that. Now. Yeah, and um, maybe a teaser because the next content hour will be all around um, BPI, so business process intelligence, and some things we were sort of already teasing here in this session. So if you're interested in that topic, just stay with us here and we'll pick up this topic again. But um, to close off the hour for uh, artificial intelligence, Karsten, um, if people are now super psyched and want to learn more, where can they go to? You can, of course, always go to the SAP community uh, and join the respective community of the different topics uh, that we structure ours by. You can always go to the SAP TechEd site and uh, choose the Keep Learning menu, which routes you to all kinds of different places afterwards. I think it's to training courses, certifications, uh, the SAP store, uh, whatever. Uh, so, like, the entire learning offering almost is accessible through that. Uh, you can always turn to uh, the, the open SAP offerings, podcast trainings, and so on. 
Um, wow. And now here at TechHead specifically, uh, right after this one here at 10 to 12 uh, CET, no, not right after, in an hour from now, we have INT int 260. Uh, take advantage of templates in document information extraction. Or you can turn to the recordings of all these other um, sessions that have been given in 201, in 202, integrate AI in S4HANA, deploy ports, purchase chatbots uh, in S4, and so on and so on. You mentioned shortly podcasts, and I know this is becoming more and more popular, and you're also into podcasts. Can you provide some insights here? Okay, on the one hand, uh, I do know, for instance, uh, there is a podcast about AI business services, uh, I'm in the totally on a totally different side. I do a podcast uh, with uh, for SAP about our open source involvement, but I think that's a topic somewhere else. Um, but it's all about uh, how do we use it, how do we contribute, uh, what are processes, experiences, etc. Also, sometimes with customers and partners, by the way. Um, and then, of course, uh, there are tons of others uh, out there, uh, like for instance, also I think about RPA, robotic process automation, conversational and so on. Perfect. So there's the community, there is a podcast, there are tech ed sessions, so really tons of information. And I think someone also mentioned the Discovery Center. So tons of information that you can check out if you want to learn more. Highly encourage you to um, yeah, visit those sites. And with that, I think we're done for the that's, hour. that's it for the hour, but we'll be right back. So grab a coffee and stay tuned. See ya. See ya. <laughs>